What's going on guys? This is Lior and welcome back to my channel. Now I'm excited to do this video and talk about my favorite neighborhoods in downtown Boston. I've got so many people calling and asking about the different pockets of Boston and what the best neighborhoods are to live and hang out in and do things. So I thought I would give you guys my list of my absolute favorite neighborhoods in the city. So with that, let's get at it. What's going on guys? My name is Lior and welcome back to my channel. Now, before I get into the meat and potatoes, two super quick things guys. Number one, if this is your first time on my channel, first of all, welcome. Second of all, make sure you smash that subscribe button for me putting out videos all the time, all about Boston lifestyle, real estate, neighborhoods, and everything in between. And number two, guys, if you guys are thinking about making any sort of move to Boston, whether you're buying, selling, investing, whatever it may be, me and my team still get so, so many calls from you guys from all over the state, the country, and even the world at this point. So if you guys are thinking about making any sort of move here, make sure you hit us up and we would absolutely love to help you out. So with that, let's get right into it. And as I said, in this video, we're gonna talk about my favorite neighborhoods in Boston. So let's start with the first neighborhood, which is the Seaport. And I love the Seaport because it is a very different neighborhood than what we're accustomed to in Boston, right? If, all the other neighborhoods we're going to talk about are very historic. They have these, you know, very characteristic brownstones that Boston is known for and that people love, and rightly so, right? I mean, they're beautiful, historic, they stand out. But the Seaboard is very different because it's like one of the newest pockets of the city. If you were here 20 years ago, you would know that there was like garages there. There was like not really much happening there but the seaport is absolutely blown up. If you walk down there now, you kind of think you're in some major metropolitan. Um, you've got glass, uh, you know, you've got tall glass towers everywhere. Uh, you know, huge condo buildings, uh, apartment buildings, office space. Um, I mean, it is just incredible what they've done to the seaport neighborhood. So in terms of things to do within seaport, um, tons and tons of restaurants all over. Um, you've got everything from like steakhouses, right? You have like Davio's, Eagles, um, Ocean Prime. You've got a bunch of other restaurants as well. Um, some of my favorites are Committee, Chickadee, Gather, 75 on Liberty. There's just a ton of different restaurants to explore all over there. Great, great food scene. Um, you've got uh, awesome places like the Cisco Brewery, Trillium Brewery is there. So great options for food and drink. It, you can walk around the seaport. There's absolutely stunning views, especially if you go on the Harbor Walk. You can walk right by the ocean, um, get amazing views of, the, of downtown Boston, the skyline. Um, so it is just an incredible place, awesome neighborhood. Again, very, very distinct from what we're used to in Boston, uh, which is what I think makes it very unique. Now, in terms of pricing there, it is certainly one of the most expensive neighborhoods in all of Boston. Um, it is very, Seaport is definitely known for its pricing there. If you're gonna be buying homes in the Seaport, typically condos are starting at around $16 to $1,700 per square foot. Uh, a lot of units can easily trade around 2,000 to 2,500 square, uh, per foot as well. So it is a very expensive place, but it is an incredible place. Um, and that is why it is number one on my list. The number two on my list is the North End neighborhood. It's probably one of the most well-known neighborhoods that Boston is known for. Uh, it is known to be a very Italian um, neighborhood. So if you are looking for um, any sort of Italian restaurants, shops, uh, grocery stores, that is the place to be. It is an incredibly culturally rich neighborhood. Um, some of my favorite food um, in all of the city is definitely in the North End. Now it is a very small neighborhood. It's not very large. It is very condensed and it has a lot of brick buildings all on top of each other. Typically you see like three, four story buildings all over the neighborhood, but plenty to do, right? The restaurant, um, plenty of places to grab drinks. You also have part of the neighborhood that's right on the water side. I mean, that's got great parks. You can walk on there, get ocean views, get water views. Um, so plenty to do in the North End. Um, it really is an incredible neighborhood from a lifestyle perspective. In terms of pricing on this list, it's gonna be one of the lower ones. 
because um, we're going to compare to, you know, when, when you compare neighborhoods like the Seaport, we'll talk about neighborhoods like Back Bay and South End. So the North End is a little bit cheaper than both of them, but it's still downtown, so it's still going to trade typically around 900 to 1,000 a foot, sometimes a little bit more towards 1,100. Um, but that's kind of the price range you're looking at in the North End. Neighborhood number three that I wanted to highlight is the Back Bay. Now, the Back Bay is known to be the prestigious neighborhood of Boston, right? Um, you know, when you kind of talk about Back Bay, it exudes a lot of prestige, uh, wealth, um, and it is really known for that, right? Now, if you look at the Back Bay on the map, you're basically covering the streets of like Beacon, Marlboro, Calm Ave, uh, Newbury, and Boylston. Um, it is an incredibly beautiful uh, uh, neighborhood. You've got brick, uh, you know, you've got your classic Boston brick brownstone buildings uh, just all over the streets. Most of the buildings there are going to be those kind of three or four story brick buildings. There are some larger full service buildings as well, but the Back Bay is just an incredibly beautiful neighborhood. When you walk down streets like Marlboro and Calm Ave, it's hard not to just appreciate the beauty of it. Plenty to do there as well. Newbury Street, of course, is world famous. Um, it's got shops, uh, restaurants, um, very, very busy, especially if you go there in like the spring, summer, early fall, got a ton of tourists there. Of course, there's also the public garden um, at the very end, at the very edge of the back bay. So you've got that. Uh, plenty of other amenities and attractions. It is a renowned neighborhood and rightly so. Now, in terms of pricing in the back bay, it is gonna be one of the more expensive neighborhoods. Not quite as typically as expensive as the seaport, Typically we're looking around $1,300 to maybe $1,500 per square foot. Sometimes a little bit more expensive, sometimes a little cheaper depending on the exact location, but certainly a premier neighborhood with premier streets um, and just a lot of things to do. So that's why Back Bay is number three on my list. Now, number four on my list is one of my personal favorite neighborhoods and that's the South End. And if you're gonna look on a map, the South End is kind of bordered by Fenway, Back Bay and Roxbury. And I think what makes South End so distinct, there's a couple of things. First of all, the restaurant and food scene in the South End is unbelievable and probably my favorite in the city. Just so many different restaurants, cafes, you know, just really incredible food. Just some examples off the top of my head. I'm not even gonna come close to covering everything, but Aquitaine, you got Barcelona, Toro, Cava, um, Orinoco, uh, you know, just a couple of restaurants off the top of my head, but just an incredible, incredible food scene. One of my favorites. If you ask anyone living in Boston, and if you guys are from Boston, you know this, a South End is kind of where you go for those really authentic and cool restaurants. Now, the other thing that the South End is known for is it does have quite a bit of parks, 11 to be exact, um, and they are really, really pretty, um, you know, because typically they're surrounded by, again, beautiful brick brownstone buildings. Um, especially again in the summer, spring, fall. Um, they are just gorgeous to walk through. They kind of have, some of them have little squares too, where there are parks in, the, in between brownstones and they are just absolutely stunning. That's what people love the South End for. So you've got these squares, for example, like Worcester Square is a famous one. You've got plenty of parks. Like I said, Peter's Park is one of the, is a bigger one there. Um, you know, it's got fields, basketball courts, tennis courts. Um, dog park, right? So it's just great, great outdoor space. You do have two stops on the Orange Line in the South End. You have your Mass Ave stop, which is on the Orange Line, and then you've got the Back Bay stop, right? And that Back Bay T stop is kind of right in between both Back Bay um, and the South End. So good transportation option, options there as well. And then in terms of pricing in the South End, if you're gonna be buying a home there, uh, you know, again, good price range, typically looking anywhere from, I'd say about a thousand to $1,200, $1,300 per square foot. Um, so still certainly pricey. Um, and again, very dependent on the exact neighborhood. Some, uh, you know, there's certainly some premier neighborhoods that trade higher, um, but again, an amazing, amazing neighborhood and absolutely one of my favorite ones. Hence it is on this list. Finally, the last neighborhood I thought I would highlight, you probably have not heard of this one. Even a lot of people that live in Boston um, typically don't know about this one. It is Bay Village. And Bay Village is one of the smallest neighborhoods. I've got the stat right here. It's only 12 square blocks. So it is a really, really small little pocket. Um, it's kind of tucked right in between the South End, Back Bay and Theater District. The reason why I love it is, first of all, it's a beautiful neighborhood. Um, but it's also just tucked away right in the middle of everything. 
and also really, really quiet, right? So that's, that's one of my favorite things about it. But in terms of architecture, it is absolutely beautiful. You actually have over there red brick federal period townhomes, um, which you don't see a lot in Boston. Um, you know, you have tree lined streets, you have gas lit street lamps, brick paved sidewalks. So it's just like, it gives you a very old Boston feel. Um, and just kind of exudes that Boston charm, in my opinion, while still being tucked literally right in the middle of the city and still very, very quiet when you're inside. So one of my favorite neighborhoods, it's close to everything, it's convenient to everything. You can get to the Back Bay, South End really easily. You can get really all parts of Boston, it's convenient from there. And that's why I just think it's kind of one of those hidden gems that not a lot of people know about, you know, but that really you should consider, especially if you're moving into downtown Boston. So. Those are the neighborhoods I wanted to highlight in this video. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. Of course, if you have any questions about any of these neighborhoods, make sure to put them in the comments below and I will definitely, definitely help you out.